So imagine hiring a team of experts that are gonna take your business and apply all of the secrets of local ranking that currently work. And then when they finish with it, they hand it back to you and the business is now sparkling like new and they've given you some tips so you can maintain it and look after it and it brings in loads more customers. You now have the most sparkling Google business profile on the web, in the world. Well, in the local area, at least. It's fully optimized, it ranks number one, and it brings in loads more customers. And then the alarm goes off. It was all just a dream. And you wake up and you start your normal day. No, really, that's not a dream. That is the way it works when it comes to helping my clients build their profiles and improve on it and then get it working the way it should work. And once you know what to do and what Google's looking for, you can turn profiles around. So they start off looking like this, where there's not a lot going on. And then just within a few months of doing the right things, you can turn it around and you can get this many inquiries and this types of business inquiries, this types of customers, these types of calls, these types of messages. The fact is, is businesses can really thrive if you optimize your Google business profile and you will love it, your customers will love it and it will just sparkle like new. So by the end of this video, you're going to know exactly what it is that Google's rewarding and the types of things I do to my businesses so that they also benefit from the expertise that I have. So an assumption is on this video that you do already have a Google business profile. So if you don't, then there's a video that also will show you what to do and how to set it up the correct way. But assuming you've now done that, let's now get into the rest of this video. So in effect, there's about 149 ranking factors that Google take into account when it comes to local ranking. So local ranking is slightly different to your normal generic SEO. So in the past, you think of SEO, search engine optimization, and there you're trying to rank, and particularly you're, you're trying to perhaps use keywords to get you found for your business. The challenge was, of course, that competition was worldwide in effect. What Google's done with Google Business Profile is it knows where people are, it knows where they are on the map, so if they search in the map, or if they search on Google search engine itself. And if it's a business, generally you want someone who's nearby that can serve you. So if you're looking for a window cleaner, you wouldn't want a window cleaner that's in Brazil if you're in the UK. You want someone who's local, not even in the UK, but just to your town or city, so they can come and clean your windows nearby. That's how Google Business Profiles work based on local search. So what are these 149 factors and how do we know how Google's decided on what they are? Well, of course, Google's never going to reveal that to you or to me, but we do have a lot of SEO experts that can tell what's being rewarded. And when you put all of them together, all these experts, they'll tell you exactly what they find ranking well at the moment. And that together gives us a good clue as to what Google's rewarding. So we're gonna run through the top 10 things now. And also I'll show you how you can find out the list of all 149 things if you really want to go to town on your Google business profile. And I have to give a big shout out to Darren Shaw from White Spark who produces this information so that we can then use it on our profiles too. And so there'll be a link down below to his site and also how you can find out about the details of that ranking method. So in reverse order of the top 10, the first area is the proximity of the address to the city centre itself. So if you, your business is in the city centre that you're trying to rank for, that particular area or that town, that will have a big factor. That's the 10th top factor that you could have. In ninth is just being verified. If you're not showing as verified, then you're not going to rank as high. So do verify your business if you haven't done so already. In eighth place is the quantity of Google reviews. So as reviews come in, you may think it's all about the actual ranking or the rating of it. So four star, five star obviously is important, but actually the number, the quantity of native reviews also has an impact. And number seven, is having additional categories. So when you set up your business, you set up the primary category, which is the most important category. But when you have secondary categories, it kind of throws you in the arena of competition in those areas too. You won't have such an impact in the secondary category because it's not your primary category, but it does give you a bit of a shout if you've actually recognized that that is a category relevant to your business. 
So in sixth place, you'd expect this, and many think this should be number one, but of course it's not. It's just down to the numerical value of the ratings that you get. So you'll know that if obviously a four or five star is going to be better than a one or two star, it goes without saying. In fifth place is the removal of spam listings through spam fighting. So a lot of business owners perhaps don't use this. This is an area where you can really gain an advantage over the competition. If the competition is actually spamming, if it's actually using black hat methods or even gray hat methods in SEO. So maybe for example, they're misusing something. Say their business is of a particular name and they're using keywords in that name. They know they're going to get a massive increase in ranking through that but that isn't reflecting their real true business name, which is breaking the policies. So in effect, it's spamming. And you have a right to report that. And if you do report it, it's kept anonymous. So it's not that anyone would know. There's nothing actually wrong. Google, in fact, encourages spam fighting. And that's why it's a high ranking factor. The fourth area is your physical address in the city search itself. So for example, if you're based in Bournemouth, and someone also is searching for your business in the Bournemouth area, and they perhaps even use the keyword Bournemouth, that will have an impact on you being found. The third area is your proximity of the address to the point of the search being made. So if the person is near you, maybe you've heard of the vicinity update, the fact is Google knows that you want someone who's near you. So if they do a search and they're very nearby, their IP address is nearby, that in itself can help you be found. So of course, if you're in a high population area, you'll get greater search because there's more people near you. Now here's the one that's often used by spammers is the keywords themselves being put in the title of the business. So for example, if you're a plumber, but you don't have the word plumber in your business name, well, often people put in the word plumber and that's how they get found again, with quite an extra ranking factor thrown in if that keyword's in there. And then if they start using the towns and cities nearby and perhaps a few other categories in their business name, this is known as keyword stuffing in effect in the title. The, probably the only way to do it properly is to actually have your business name with the keywords in it and register it that way and have your website showing it and even your logo showing it so that that then would be a reasonably decent way of doing it. Even then it's a bit of a gray area. But the agreed number one factor by all the experts and including myself would be to make sure that the primary category is absolutely correct. And that can be a challenge sometimes if your business runs two or three different sides to it, you need to work out what would be the most important one to rank in. So a challenge, getting the right primary category. Have a look at what you currently have and then look at what's now available. Google updates it quite often. You may be in a very competitive market and changing to a different primary category if it's justifiable to your business, may be a way in which you can get higher rankings. So now you know what's having a big impact on local ranking factors, you need to now think about what those other areas are too. We've just covered the top 10. There's another 139 that we haven't covered. And so the link down below will give you an opportunity to find out what they are. You can just see through them here. There's quite a few areas that we haven't covered that maybe you expect to see. But if you are a beginner and you're trying to get these things and you're trying to nail your ranking and you really want to see it thrive, there are a few things that people do wrong. There's some bad advice out there. And I've put all that together in this video here that's going to tell you what you should be doing and also the things to try and avoid. So I'll see you on that video next.